Emily Carr's The House of All Sorts, Chapter 8, First Tenant. She was a bride, just refer... <laughs> she was a bride, just returned from honeymooning, this first tenant of mine. Already, she was obviously bored with a very disagreeable husband. In her heart, she knew he was not proud of her. He kept his marriage to this Canadian girl secret from his English mother. The bride was a shocking housekeeper and dragged round all day in boudoir cap, flow, frowsy negligee, and mules. Slip, slop, slip, slop. In my basement, I could hear her overhead. Occasionally, she hung out a gray wash, left it flapping on the line for a week, unless, for very shame, I took it into her. Awfully kind, she would say. I've been meaning to bring it in these six days. Ugh, housekeeping is such a bore. As far as I could see, she did not do any. Even trees and Bushes flutter the dust off, manage to do some renewing. Slip, slop, slip, slop, her aimless feet traipsed from room to room. She did not trouble to raise the lid of the garbage can, but tossed her discards out of the back door. Occasionally, she dressed herself bravely and, hanging over the front gate, peered and peered. As people passed, going to Beacon Hill Park. She would stop them, saying, Was there a thin man in gray behind you when you turned into this street? Astonished, they would ask, Why would it be? My husband, I suppose he has forgotten me again, a bachelor for so long he forgets that he has a wife. He promised to take me to the races today. Oh, dear. Going into her flat, she slammed the door and melted into negligee again. He was a horrid man, but I too would have tried to forget a wife like that. Negligee, bad cooking, dirty house. They had leased my flat for six months. Three days before the fourth month was up, the man said to me casually, we leave here on the first. Your lease, I replied. Lease, he laughed in my face. Leases are not worth their ink. Prevent a landlady from turning you out. That's all. I consulted the lawyer who admitted that leases were all in favor of the tenant. He asked, who have you got there? I told him. I know that outfit. Get them out. Make them go in the three days notice they gave you. Tell them if they don't vacate on the dot, they must pay another full month, not one day over the three, mind you, or a full month's rental. When I told the couple what the lawyer had said, they were very angry, declaring that they could not possibly move in three days' time, but that they would not pay for overtime. All right, I said. Then the lawyer, they knew the lawyer personally and started to pack violently. The bride and groom had furnished their own flat, Garish newness, heavily varnished, no nearer to being their own than one down payment. Less, in fact, because the installments were overdue, and store vans came and took the furniture back. The woman left in a cab with a couple of suitcases. The forwarding address she left was that of her mother's home. The man left a separate forwarding address. His was a hotel. To describe the cleaning of the flat, would be impossible. As a parting niceness, the woman hurled a pot of soup, meat, vegetables, and grease down the kitchen sink. She said, you hurried our moving, and shrugged. The soup required a plumber. The first tenant, this first tenant, nearly discouraged me with landladying. I consulted an experienced person. She said, in time, you will learn to make yourself hard, hard, hard.